Steve here with Table Rock Tea Company. This is my review of my 2023 Honda CT125 or Trail 125 or Hunter Cub, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this will not be a review on the technical side of things. This is going to be more of a uh, review of modifications that I've done to mine, what I think of the bike, and just overall review. But if you want the technical stuff as far as like engine capacity and stuff, that's not what I'm going to do here. But I want to start by kind of going around the bike. I want to show you the modifications that I've done with mine. But more importantly, I want to tell you why I did them and certain modifications that I didn't do and why I didn't do them. I think there are a lot of reviews out there that talk about all the upgrades they've done to the bike, but they never kind of tell you why. Um, you know, and some of them are just sort of extra gadgets that you won't really need. So uh, we'll just kind of do an overview of that, walk around the bike, and we'll start really up here with this. Uh, this is going to be, I think, the most important modification for you, and that is a USB charger. This is an easy thing to install. There are installation videos. I'm not going to do that here. There's a gasket that comes on the bike, and you pop that out, and you replace it with this USB charger, so you can plug your phone in as you go. Now, uh, as you look at this, I've got my handy-dandy stick pointer here. Um, again, it charges for USB, but this just um, sits right in here. If you come around the front, uh, this is where the line is. It just follows around. I've just electrical taped it to the um, original wiring harness. It goes up and hooks into the light. Now, the light just has these two screws. It, it's easy to come off and you just plug and play into the wiring harness. It's really easy to do. Again, there are videos for that. So that is a hugely important upgrade, and um, that allows you then to put your phone in there. So I guess that takes me then to the next thing. I've got this um, phone holder, which I really like. It's pretty simple. I got mine for an iPhone 12. It'll uh, accommodate bigger than that, smaller than that as well, but this just uh, is, a, is a quick thing. And it hooks onto the bar, which brings us to this stabilizer bar. And again, all of these parts I will have uh, on Amazon for you or the link to uh, Bees Deals. That's the other place that I get stuff, but that'll all be in the channel description to get any of these parts. And of course, if you use the links to Amazon, that helps us out too. I got this stabilizer bar for two reasons, okay? Um, one, to stabilize the handlebars. Now, these handlebars are fine, they're pretty sturdy, but if you think about just vibrations, um, you, you do this enough, you can break metal, and it just makes more sense to take out the vibration on these handles. So that's what the stabilizer bar is for. The other thing is that it gives you a place to hold your phone thing. Now, there are uh, phone holders that clip right onto here, onto the, the main um, clamp for the handlebars. It makes it nice and low profile, but it gets in the way of your key. And I originally wanted to have a phone holder right here uh, because I like the clean look of it, but it really does interfere with how you do your ignition key. So that's a problem. So that's why I got the stabilizer bar. So then I guess uh, the next part on the front of the bike, um, well, before we get to the, the engine uh, guard, let me go ahead and tell you something that I don't have. You'll see a lot of these reviews that are going to have a cage around the headlight, okay? They'll have like a rack and, and all that, and, and they, some people think they look cool. I'm kind of neutral on it, but look, I'm not ever planning on wiping this bike out to the point where I smash a headlight. If I'm going to use that, that headlight protector, I'm going to have to do some repairs on my bike. Uh, but as far as not having a rack on the front, I do that because I don't like stuff on the front end of the bike. I don't like things that are going to mess up the weight distribution on the steering of the bike. I'm not a hugely experienced rider. I know some people who have been, you know, riding motorcycles since they were little kids. That's not a problem. They can handle that. Um, but I'm not in that category, and I don't want to be tempted on packing stuff on the front of the bike that's going to screw up the the weight distribution and the steering so i just don't like that um, so i don't do that whole front cage some people think it's cool not for me so then we get to this this is the um, engine guard and the reason for this um, when you know you look at the descriptions and why people buy it is in case you drop the bike it protects you know the engine 
that's one thing, but I'll tell you why I use it. Um, I, one, I think they look really cool, but, but for the practicality side of things, I've gone where sticks start flying up, and instead of hitting my shins, they hit this thing. So that's one reason that I have this engine guard here, because um, it's almost kind of like a shin guard. But the other reason that I have this is um, it kind of gives me a visual on the width of the bike. If you'll notice, the back sticks out pretty wide, especially if you have the extra gas can, which I'll get to in just a second. But this lets me not be tempted if I'm going on a little narrow path. I know if I can't get this in there, I'm not going to get the back of the bike. So I don't want to get like in too far only to get the back half of my bike wedged in somewhere. Very rare that you're going to run into that opportunity or, or circumstance, but I still kind of like that anyway. So that's that. Up here, um, I went ahead and put this rack on. Um, this is just to make the middle column uh, a little more useful. So you can put a carabiner on here, put your water bottle, um, that kind of thing, or a day pack. Um, and I just got this purely because it was pretty inexpensive and it makes this center column utilitarian. You can strap a bunch of stuff on here and uh, kind of keep it out of the way. It also keeps it center, so unlike having something on the front of the bike, you can have it right here. It's still accessible, but it doesn't affect your steering so or your balance. So that's that. All right, so as we come up here, I'm going to tell you a modification that I don't recommend. I see a lot of people have a hard time with this heel switch, I, you know, to shift gears with your heel or your toe. And I've seen people actually cut this off. You know, uh, I don't recommend ever doing that, you know, where you, where you cut stuff off your bike. Um, to me, that's, that's, that's just, I don't know, it's just not right. So um, I use this heel shifter quite a bit. Um, you can just kind of rock back and, and shift. And uh, I like it. Uh, some people say they have big feet, and so when they rest on the, the bars, they're mistakenly hitting that. I don't have that issue. My, I'm a nine and a half on my shoe size, and that's not been a problem for me. Um, I always put this bike on a center stand, okay? Uh, they, they do have side stands, but I've never liked a side stand for a motorcycle, even though this is light. This really tilts the bike. And if you're on any kind of soft ground, uh, I don't know, it's just not as stable as the center stand. Why do I mention that now? Here's another modification that I would not do to the bike. If you come over here, this bar right in the middle, they uh, often refer to as the butt buster. I don't sit back that far, um, but people have a hard time with this, and I've seen videos where they've cut this off, and I think that's a bad move to do. Um, I grab this thing to rock it back and put it on the center stand. That's what I use to do that. Um, and plus being this nice, uh, pearl green, I couldn't color match that anyway. Uh, people do that if they have like a black rack or whatever. Um, but yeah, no reason to cut that off. The other thing too, is if you have a passenger, they'll use that to hang on to in some regards. You know, you kind of hang on to it in between your legs. Um, so yeah, I just wouldn't cut anything off my bike. So that's a modification I would not do. As we come around the bike here, Another mod that I did was I put this helmet lock. Now the bike does come with a helmet strap holder, but it's not lockable. And so I like to have a lockable one so that you can leave the helmet on your bike. If you're going to go into a restaurant, if you're going to, um, you know, go into a store or whatever, you don't have to take your helmet with you and you can lock that. I'll show you how that, um, that hooks in, obviously to get to the the bike underneath the seat and the gas can um, is this here pops up and you can see this just goes underneath with these two screws here these two bolts and so that's how that works um, another thing you'll see this in review this allen key is going to be used for opening up your little toolbox that's the big tool kit that they come with um, but those are in a ton of reviews you can see that as well so that's that um, then moving around, you can see that I have this uh, extra seat. I just went with the half seat because this bike, and you'll see at the end of this review, 
uh, you're primarily one person. I wanted to have the option to have two people if I needed to, but that's not gonna be the norm. So this is just for backup, just for an emergency. If I need to carry somebody, it's not like that's all the time. This is a single person bike. The two seater for me is just uh, an extra thing. So I have this seat. And of course, if you're gonna do that, you're also going to want to get the foot pegs. So I've got these foot pegs here. Now my friend in Thailand says, um, if you drive these through water, like a creek or whatever, make sure you immediately double WD-40 these because they get really stiff and um, yeah, kind of out of whack if you take them underwater. One of the things I did want to point out that's a real pain in the butt, this seat, to install the seat, I want to show you here, if you come around this way, um, there are two bolts that go through the bottom of the seat and to get to them is a real pain okay i don't know if you can focus in on that but here's a here's one of the bolts under here um it's way in there so and, and there's another one on the other side so um what i actually had to do was get in there with a crescent wrench and just do like a quarter turn flip it quarter turn flip it it took me probably 40 minutes to put that stupid seat on. Real pain in the butt. Uh, if you had like a 10 millimeter ratcheting crescent, you can do it. You can't do it with a socket wrench because there's not enough room to get the socket in there. So yeah, that was an aggravation. All right, but it was definitely worth it. So then coming around the bike here again, if you have the foot pegs, um, I guess we can talk about the extra gas can. Um, just keep in mind, this is where the exhaust is. So as we come around and look at this gas can, this is another, I think, very, very important upgrade. And I'm gonna show you some modifications that I did to get this on here. These gas cans come in two sizes. They also come in, I think, three colors, black, red, and this uh, military green. Doesn't quite match the pearl, but it's still you know, pretty cool. But they come in three liter and five liter. I don't know why anybody would buy the three liter. It's almost the same amount of money. Um, and this tank holds 1.4 gallons. And I think this is 1.3. Uh, so you get an almost full tank of gas here with this. And the way it mounts on, I'll show you um, because it, I'm gonna need to show you this anyway later. Um, you essentially have this lock that comes out and that lets you spin this and unscrew it. So you can lock the storage on your bike, which actually is really nice, especially if you get into a situation where gas is expensive, which we're kind of in now. Um, people can't steal your tank. So I liked this particular pannier. You can use this pannier for side bags or whatever, but you can also use it for the gas can. And I should mention that this part, this locking mechanism, comes with the gas can. It doesn't come with the pannier. So just know that if you buy the gas can, uh, it's gonna come with the mounting hardware for it. So I wanted to show you in here, what happens when you put these panniers on is um, you end up, uh, when you do that, you kind of lose that little toolbox that comes. This toolbox is opened right here with that Allen key uh, that, that's under the seat. Um, but it's uh, it's a small toolbox. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's a joke. You, you get a, uh, a screwdriver. That's all that comes in there. What do I keep in the toolbox? Well, I keep my papers. So I keep my registration and my insurance papers. And I also keep my owner's manual in there and 10 or 20 bucks in case I need to use that in an emergency. So I really wanted the toolbox in there, but the problem is if you buy one of the panniers, it mounts to this little fin, and that's where the toolbox mounts. So you can't have both unless you do a modification. So what I did was I made a little bracket so that I could drop the toolbox below where the pannier goes. And I'll show you in the uh, picture in picture what that looks like. I've got two little brackets that I mount in between so that the toolbox can go lower and fit right underneath. And I think that's really great. Um, another thing to mention about this um, pannier is it comes with this other brace to give you a third point of contact um, to keep it from wobbling. It's supposed to mount here, okay? 
but it doesn't. It doesn't fit, it doesn't work, and that was really kind of annoying. And then I had kind of an aha moment in that um, I figured out how to mount it to this side reflector. Uh, it takes a little bit of finagling to do that. But let me tell you, the reason I wanted this third point of contact is because when you think about it, you've got these two bolts that are holding this onto one little fin of metal, and that bike is, is moving and there's vibration. You've now got 10 pounds of gasoline on it that's basically wearing it out like that. And so I didn't want it to vibrate and just snap this whole thing off. Uh, so I did want it to be stable. Um, but like I said, it doesn't, it didn't fit. And I don't know if that's a problem with the 2003 model, um, that it just doesn't hit that third point. So here's the modification you have to do for that to make it work. Um, right here, you can see that there are two bolts. Um, this L bracket only has one hole drilled in it. So what I had to do was figure out where the other one was, drill another hole in this L bracket so that it sat flush. And then I was able to tie it in. Uh, to the um, tail reflector and you can see it's really stable now that doesn't move and I was able to keep the toolbox so that's super super cool pretty happy about that so then the only other modification I'll kind of move on was this um, Woshider box now I see a lot of reviews where guys have um, and gals uh, they have the uh, I guess milk carton, you know, on the back, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but I wanted something that was covered. And the other thing too, is I keep my helmet in here. Um, I just didn't want stuff dusty or whatever. Wanted it rainproof, waterproof, you know, so I wanted a covered box. I really like this one. Uh, one of the neat features about this box is it was the biggest that I could get without extending the length of the bike. So even with the little half seat on it, it comes, to below where this little mud flap is. So I didn't want to add, you'll see another modification where people add a whole seat and then they'll add an extra, you know, addition to the rack and then your bike gets longer. And I just didn't want that. So this was the biggest capacity box that I could find uh, for both things. And what's nice about this, if you come on over here on this box is it comes with these pads that you add. So this creates a backrest. So it's got one for the corner and then one for the back. So when you do have that extra passenger, uh, they can sit up against it and, it and it's nice. So it locks in place and it's a nice box. Um, it's pretty sturdy. It's got reflectors on the back. It is expensive, but I think it's worth it. Um, there's a little pouch in here and stuff like that, but but it's nice. Um, the other option that you might want to consider doing is maybe a Yeti cooler. This one's not insulated. So if you want to carry insulated stuff, maybe look for like a nice cooler, but you're going to have to modify that. So I think that's about it as far as mods go on the bike. Uh, one thing I did want to mention about the gas can, uh, before I bought the bike, I was tempted to buy two of the saddle uh, the panniers um, and two gas cans because I thought that was great until I realized oh yeah the uh, the guard or the mufflers over here so if you did another back uh, or another side saddle it's going to stick way out and um, I don't even know if they make one to be honest uh, so I'm glad I didn't buy that before I actually got the bike because I would have just been sitting there with an extra um, you know, gas can or whatever. So, which also reminds me too, you know, this is a nice guard as far as the exhaust goes, um, but I imagine this still gets hot. So whoever your second rider is gonna be, they just have to be mindful of that. Um, I don't know that they're gonna wanna rest their legs on here when they put their, their foot on this foot pedal. But um, anyway, that's what it's for. So I think that's about all the modifications for the bike. The only other modification I would do to this bike, but not yet, are uh, a tire change, I suppose. They come with these dual sport, you know, on off-road tires. The treads are pretty good. I think in general, they handle road and uh, gravel pretty well. But I've seen folks put the, um, I think they call them trials. And I'll try to put a photo in the video on what I'm talking about. But uh, IRC makes some that are apparently pretty good. But again, I'm not going to put those on until these wear out. But that will be the next upgrade to the bike.
I know this next section might seem boring at first, but stick with me. I'm gonna go through the owner's manual. You can see I'm just gonna go through the highlights, but there are a lot of them. This owner's manual is actually pretty good. And I think uh, it's important to read it because it'll really help you get the most life out of your bike. That's what I look at it as, not so much as um, you know telling me how to ride, but really telling me how to keep up with the maintenance uh, just the routine stuff so that I can keep this bike well over 100,000 miles, you know, that's my goal. So let's go over the owner's manual real quick. Again, bear with me because this is some, some pretty uh, uh, good stuff. So I'll give you some of the highlights. Uh, I got to take my glasses off because I'm kind of blind as a bat. Uh, but first of all, page 11, it talks about uh, just the break-in period. You know, if you buy this bike new like I did, I had zero miles on mine. Um, it talks about the first 300 miles, okay, and what you do there, avoid full throttle starts, basically try not to accelerate too much, hard braking, um, and just, just be conservative with the bike for the first 300 miles. That just makes sense. You know, all the components are new, they have to wear in, and you don't want to just screw up your bike in the first 300 miles, right? Uh, page 23 then talks about uh, what's on the gauge that you'll see. Uh, main things there, for me anyway, uh, right here on the top of the gauge, you can see there are little, um, I guess those are fuel. Uh, yeah, it's the fuel. So E is all the way at the end. So if you have more bars, obviously that's more full. But more importantly, uh, when you start seeing the E signal flashing, that means you have 0.29 gallons left in your tank. So that's good to know. Um, so, you, you know, just to give you an idea of the range, again, have an extra gas can with you that that is helpful uh, right here then as far as um, uh, I flagged this because starting the engine I didn't go over this but one of the things that appealed to me about the trail 125 uh, versus say getting the super cub was that this actually has a kickstart so if you have a problem and everything goes dead or whatever you can kickstart this bike and it's pretty easy because it's not uh, a super big engine so that's nice. Tells you how to kickstart it. That's page 29. Uh, let's flip over here. Um, here we go. Refueling the bike. Uh, again, how to get in there. But it basically, this, the important thing here on the refueling, um, of course, is the capacity is 1.4 gallons. But on this other side, this is really where I was getting, was the, sh the shifting of the gears, okay? So... This is important to know just to keep in mind. So from first to second is 12 miles an hour, up to 12 miles an hour. Second to third, 19 miles an hour. Third to fourth, 25 miles an hour. And then downshifting, fourth to third, you want to be at 16. Uh, and, and I've noticed this riding the bike um, that if you, <laughs> if you downshift too early, it'll really jolt. So you just don't want to do that, you know. Um, so 16 miles an hour, third to second, 12 miles an hour. So it kind of tells you what range to expect. Again, this is not a very fast bike. We'll go over that when I get to the review on what I think of this bike and who it's for. Uh, page 45 on the manual. This is super important in my opinion, because and this is really handy. So kudos to Honda for doing this, but this is a maintenance schedule, okay? And it talks about... Uh, the first like 600 miles, what you do, um, it has it in miles and kilometers for you euros out there. Uh, and it goes through what things you'll want to do at certain mileages for the bike. And again, this is so you can get the most life out of the bike. I think it's just important to follow the routine. What's nice in here is that it actually gives you, this is page 47, uh, a little uh, place where you can fill in all of those uh, scheduled maintenance so you can keep record. And again, it takes it all the way up to 68,000 miles, which is totally uh, you know, reasonable to think that you're gonna get out of this bike. I plan to get 100,000 out of it. So that's that part. Again, just kind of bear with me as we cruise through this. Um, all right, page 55 talks about the, uh, the oil that you use, 54. Uh, and it's going to be 10W30. That's the oil that you're going to want to use for the bike. It gives you uh, the different standards there. I don't know if you can kind of see that or not, but yeah. Um, and it also talks about the, uh, the chain oil. It also tells you what to look for as far as wear and tear on the 
uh, drivetrain uh, that you know on the chain. So uh, that's good. Again, these are all very helpful tips. Uh, let's see on the next one here. Uh, this is uh, page sixty, and this is important too. It tells you how to get into the battery without you know breaking the plastics and stuff like that. So uh, that's important to know how to get to the battery in case. Um, that goes on you, but again, this can kickstart, so that's really cool. And then the last final thing is uh, engine oil and, um, you know, how to add and change that. So I think, obviously, you should be able to do your own oil. That shouldn't be a, an issue, but it does help to know what you're looking for as far as where the dipstick is, where the drain is, all of that. Also brake fluid, but you probably won't need to mess with that too much. So anyway, that's the manual. Really good stuff. I would suggest you take the time to read it, but those are the highlights. Now I'm going to show you what I keep on the bike with me in this box. Again, I don't like to take up too much room in the box because this is really for function. So this is if I go on a trip and I want to take snacks, a sandwich, you know, uh, beverages, whatever. Maybe Jen's going to call me up and say, hey, could you pick up a gallon of milk, whatever. I want to have room for that, so I don't want to just pack it full. But I do want to have some stuff in here in case of emergency. So I always keep my helmet in, in this just in the downtime, so it's always there. But again, that's why I got that helmet lock. Uh, so this won't really be in there. This uh, particular box does have these two pouches here. Haven't really used those yet. I suppose um, you can put uh, different things in there. I might put brochures for our company in there. We have a tea company. Uh, so as I go around talking to people, I can hand them flyers. So that's kind of cool. Um, what I do have in here, um, I'm gonna actually bring the camera over for the last part of it and I'll show you. But um, I have some basic tools. Again, there will be a link in the um, video description on this. This was a pretty cheap set of uh, metric uh, 3 8 inch drive um, stuff. It has pretty much all of the uh, ones you're going to need for this bike. I think it goes up to 19, no, nope, it goes up to 21 uh, millimeters. So that's really nice uh, if you want a ratcheting thing and it's all in one handy dandy thing. Um, then I've got on top of that, I've got a set of adjustable wrenches and then I have, um, this is important. Okay. This is a number two Phillips head, but it is J I S. So Japanese, um, you know, pitch because obviously the bike is, is Japanese. So, um, that is important. So this, again, there'll be a link there. But that's the, the tool that you'll want for pretty much all of the screws that have a Phillips head. I've got a set of three tire irons here in case you need to change your tire. I think that's just super helpful. Uh, if you don't have them and you need them, that's not going to be fun. <laughs> so, so that's that. Then zip ties. I carry a bunch of these with me. Um, also carry duct tape and WD-40, as they say. If it uh, turns and it's not supposed to, you use duct tape. If it doesn't turn and it's supposed to, WD-40. So, uh, but the zip ties are nice in case you need to just zip something down. And these are the foot long ones. So that's always helpful. Again, this is stuff just to get you back home in a pinch, you know. Um, I carry an extra spare tire. Uh, here's the specs on that tire, uh, I'm sorry, uh, inner tube. So that's the tube for that. Um, again, there'll be a link in the description. And then last but not least, I have two ratchet straps. You can get these at Harbor Freight or somewhere cheap. Why do I have these? In case all else fails and I have to ask somebody to get my bike loaded on a pickup truck or something like that, you can strap it down so you want two of these so i keep that in there and then the last thing and this is where i'll i'll actually bring the camera over um, is a can or a tube of uh, this stuff here which is basically the slime let's see if i can turn it around so that's the slime so if you really have to uh you know quick repair on a tire uh, hopefully this works and that's the first thing you can do to get yourself home. Otherwise you're looking at a tire replacement in the field, which is a real pain in the butt. 
But what I wanted to show you was all that stuff doesn't take up a whole lot of space. So you can see I have plenty of room in here for my helmet or a gallon of milk or whatever. So, you know, that's kind of important. Um, again, you know, why do you carry what you carry? Obviously you want some emergency stuff, but you also want it to be fun and functional. So, you know, I wouldn't pack like an entire mechanics kit in here or anything like that. So that is what I keep in the box. Now the part you've been waiting for, the actual review. Do I like the bike? Do I not like the bike? Who's it for? Who's it not for? Well, obviously I bought one. So at the end of the day, I like the bike, but there are a lot of caveats with this. Now, as far as what this bike is, 125 cc's, this bike has been around since the 60s. Millions, actually I think 100 million or, or so have been sold worldwide. You'll see these as primary transportation in Asia, Europe, Africa, Central South America. We've been all over the world and seen these. No problem, you'll see families piled on, you'll see chickens on the back. We're not talking about that here for this review though. We're in the US market and there is a reason that you don't see a ton of these in the US. It has some serious limitations for the US market. And I know I'm gonna offend a lot of people on this because this has a diehard fan base. You know, you can go on Facebook, you can see just tons and tons of forums about this bike, um, just some great stuff and people absolutely love it. They take it everywhere in the right setting. And that's really gonna be the key. That's why you're sticking around for this review to see is this bike for you, okay? First of all, let's talk about price and what you get. 125 cc bike, that's not very powerful, okay? Out the door, this thing cost me $5,000. Now, I bought it brand new. However, these are on back order. They're hard to get in the U.S. Uh, when they get them in, they go pretty quickly. But $5,000 for 125 cc is, is an awful lot of money. To put that in perspective, I could go on Facebook Market right now and buy like a used BMW F650 GS for like four or 4,500, you know? Um, yeah, it would have maybe 30,000 miles on it, but a lot of life left in it, a lot more power, all that kind of stuff. But this bike is not that, and it's not for that. So who's it for? This is recreational. This bike will say that it goes 55 miles an hour. Not really. That's downhill with a tailwind, okay? And certainly not with two people. They sell a second seat and they talk about being able to do it. I've got the second seat here in an emergency only. But if you think about it, two people at 150 pounds each, 300 pounds, this bike is only rated for 265 total capacity. You put two people on this and it's hurting, it's hurting. Um, but 35 miles an hour all day long and it'll do that uphill, anything like that, off road, on road, Anywhere you want to go, this bike will certainly take you there. I forgot to mention, there's even a snorkel here. So you can take this in water all the way up to here uh, and, and it'll just go anywhere. Um, it's just super fun for that kind of thing. Now to put my mom at ease, because I'm sure, hi mom, you're watching this video. Um, this bike, I treat just like I would a pedal bicycle or an e-bike, okay? And that's essentially where I'm going with this review as far as who the right customer is for this, all right? 35 miles an hour is your sweet spot. So what does that mean in practicality if you are a consumer in the US? Uh, if you are in a place with it, which has jam-packed traffic, like gridlock, like Manhattan, you could use this bike because you can weave in and out of traffic, that's great. Um, if you are rural like I am, and uh, I guess I should maybe explain why I even bought this bike and why is it on a T channel for, for crying out loud. So we have Table Rock Tea Company. We're out here in the mountains in South Carolina. And I bought this bike because for 10 years I have been saying, I wonder where that road goes. I wonder where that road goes. And I never take the roads because they can really end up leading into gravel um, and just these little horse paths or whatever. You never know what you're gonna do. So even when I had my little Z3 convertible, I never took those roads. I would not take uh, those off roads around here on a bike that's say like my old Honda 750 Magna. I just wouldn't do it. But this, anytime, no problem. If there's some little, little windy path, ah, just take it, let's see where it goes. This is an exploring adventure bike and it is supremely fun for that. I can't stress that enough. It is so fun. 
but I treat it like a bike. With the automatic um, uh, transmission, you know, there's no clutching to worry about, and so anybody can just jump on and go. So really this is, uh, I put it in the same class as an e-bike, but a whole lot better. It'll go faster, um, but it's the same ease and convenience and safety as an e-bike. So if you are worried about that, again, mom, this is for you. Uh, I still, you know, I wear my helmet and all that, but I treat it like a bike. So this is the part that might offend some of you guys who are diehard motorcycle people, you know, the whole share the road and all that. This is not a share the road kind of vehicle. I would not take this motorcycle on anything posted for more than 45 miles an hour. So if you're trying to ride this on 55 mile an hour roads, that is a probably a stupid thing to do. And the other thing too is don't be cavalier about it. Like if you're on the road and you see a car behind you, I always scoot over to the side and, and, and let them pass. I don't stop, but I treat it like I was on an e-bike or a pedal bike. I'm not gonna be in the middle of the road going, well, I'm a motorcycle and I've got my rights and all that. This is not that kind of bike. If you want that, don't get this bike. That's not gonna be for you. So yeah, super high traffic congested cities, ultra rural, and I would say rural meaning you're not going to see a car, like one car within five minutes, something like that. Suburbia, forget it. I would not have this bike in Greenville. I wouldn't have it in Traveler's Rest. I wouldn't have it in any town where I anticipate being passed or encountered by another vehicle within five minutes at, or, or where they're going 55 miles an hour or more. Forget it. So who's it great for? It's great for preppers. This is about the ultimate prepper bike. It sips gas, it goes anywhere. Um, that's the other thing too about that whole 35 miles an hour. That 35 is consistent, so it's not like a moped where like if you go up a hill, you're gonna drop down to 20. No, nah, this will take you up 35, no problem. You'll maintain that speed pretty much anywhere, okay? So it just kind of goes anywhere. So it's a really awesome vehicle for preppers as a bug out vehicle. Great for RV people. You know, if you want a bike that's gonna be on the back of your RV so that when you park, you can just take it into town to get your groceries or whatever, um, totally, totally cool. If you're an explorer like me that wants to look around these back roads, this is your bike. You know, this would be an absolute blast to take for, you know, a weekend backpacking adventure on off-road trails, totally, totally cool. So um, that's really what the vehicle is for, uh, again, I like it, I'm a fan. I can see having this bike for life because it's not really a bike. Even people that don't ride motorcycles can ride this motorcycle. Uh, again, it's lightweight, it only weighs like 265. So even if I go up a small trail and have to completely turn around, I can pick it up from the back, spin it around and get out. You know, it's, it's, it's really no problem. So it's a motorcycle for people that don't want a motorcycle. Uh, I don't know how else to say that. I described it to a friend as a sport utility moped. Um, and I know that's going to offend some of you guys again who are diehard fans. Again, I'm a fan. I own one. I, I dropped a lot of money on this thing and I absolutely love the bike. You just have to know what you're getting into. And I think unfortunately a lot of these reviews just kind of go about, oh, these are my modifications. And you see all these pictures of like, I'm in Alaska and this is awesome and blah, blah, blah. And sort of selling that fantasy of what this bike is. If you live in those settings and if you have the right environment, this is perfect. If you don't, you'll be selling this thing with less than a thousand miles on it. So hopefully that review helped you as far as making a choice uh, on you know whether or not this is the bike for you. It's certainly the bike for me and I love it. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Please again, like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned to see what else is brewing here at Table Rock Tea Company.